Hi everyone, I'm Maribel. I'm from Mercedes Doll School, and this week we're going to be talking about identifying and establishing healthy relationships. I think um, we don't live under a rock, and um, they always say two is better than one, or the more the merrier. Um, and you eventually want to be happy and have a fulfilling life, and so. I guess people around you make or break things. So it's important uh, to be able to um, have healthy relationships to be able to be successful and all that. Um, you'll be able to have a better, you know, and longer impact um, in the world if you're able to build and have good healthy relationships. So this is why we're gonna do this video where we identify some qualities that are that we're looking for in healthy relationships. And I'll start with like a ton of them as well as end with some really good, um, just um, more just general ideas of what you should and how to establish a healthy relationship. Okay, so we'll start out with communication. We all know that communication um, is very important, but it's very important to be able to uh, communicate how you feel, what you're thinking, you know, have that sense of safety net. Um, you know, knowing what causes, what's causing problems, be transparent um, and be able to empathize, right? So um, putting yourself in someone else's shoes, you know, when you're transparent, you're, you can see what's going on all the time and have no questions of really what's going on. So you're always communicating um, and trying to understand a person, where they're coming from, um, and be, you know, uh, as well as maybe sympathize, sympathize or empathize. And that's why communication is very important. With this communication, I think it leads into like being able to be honest. Um, and when you're honest with someone, you know, you're always telling the truth no matter what. I always tell people, slap me with truth, never kiss me with lies. Whether that's a significant partner, uh, whether it's in a, you know, in a job, just tell me. Tell me the bad news right now. Let's, let's figure it out, right? Um, and because of being honest, then you also learn to trust that person which is the other one huge one i think being able to have trust in someone um it's very important you know without trust and i know that especially in the counseling field if you don't have trust like you have not building a rapport with your client or your student you will not get anywhere you will not get that person to do what you would like them to do for their own benefit of course um, so there's that. Um, another thing that they say is forgiveness. <laughs> Understand no one's perfect and people will make mistakes. It's a learning process. You know, learn to apologize when you're wrong. Um, and because if we have these high expectations and standards that the person we're talking to are going to be perfect, then we're going to be let down a lot. You know, I'm not saying to lower your standards, but don't expect perfection because you know you're not perfect either. So forgiveness. Um, be understanding. And I think this one kind of goes with what I kind of said with communication. Oh, be open to, you know, um, actually this kind of goes with communication. I kind of went with that one. Communication where you open to sympathy and empathy, you know. Um always try to understand where the other person is coming from and um sometimes we are able to sympathize because we've been in their shoes but sometimes we will learn to empathize because we might not ever be in their shoes but we need to learn and try to visualize and understand where they came from you know put yourself in someone else's shoes so that kind of went with communication i added it a little bit more one of the things that i mentioned and then it actually mentions is understand people's love language and like I said, this doesn't have to be romantic, you know, be actively loving someone how they want to be loved, learning, you know, what are their priorities. And I think, like I mentioned, the five love languages, like we mentioned, is physical touch, words of affirmation, time, high quality time, and um, acts of service, as well as gifts, 
you know, like I said, if you're in working in, uh, like, romantic, you know, little notes, you know, seeing how beautiful they are, you know, um, and telling, you know, thanking someone, appreciating someone, um, whether with a thank you or a please, you know, so understanding that um, the love languages are huge. And it was actually mentioned in there. So, yay, we talked about this love, five love languages, right? Um, okay, that's that. And then we have respect. And what is respect? Um, it's an admiration of someone for some of their certain qualities. You know, when you aspire to be and have certain qualities, whether it's wisdom, whether when someone's really honest and you know understand what your qualities are, it's going to be important. Um, appreciate, and that kind of goes with the love language, right? You appreciate someone, you so you're saying thank you, um, and uh, you're giving gifts. You know, you're either vocally telling someone or something, you know, like I said, or you're thanking them, you know, always that don't ever assume. So appreciation goes a long way. And I think that kind of goes with, you know, I always say the A's, appreciation, acknowledgement, appreciation. Um, and there was another one. I can't remember. Hmm admiration maybe uh but i think it's more of appreciation and acknowledgement of a person someone always wants to be noticed that acknowledging definitely is one step and then appreciation is going a little bit further um make time i think when you make time for someone it's important whether it's you're holding a meeting or a one-on-one -on -one, whether and you're prioritizing it okay once a week i'm gonna have a date you know no matter what even if you have kids, <laughs> in my personal opinion, you always will prioritize your um, relationship because guess what? You guys are the foundation. You are what keeps the whole family together. If you guys are happy, your kids are happy. So I think if you prioritize your relationship, your partner, I think you're setting a good example for your kids and um, and for everyone. So make sure, you got to make sure that what's keeping together the glue that keeps you guys together which is just you two that uh, you prioritize that right so make time for each other laugh a lot i think you always have to figure out you know how to make things fun have fun try something new you know um, and that way you can laugh at you. not at each other but with each other <laughs> and um so laugh a lot, they say that's a huge one. Autonomy, um, a sense of individuality, you know, um, have time away from each other, you know, because, you know, they say that absence makes the heart fonder, you know, so kind of like have some days, so once a month at least, I would say with your girls, once every other month, I have not idea whichever is more reasonable, girl time or guy time, you know, like summon out, you know, go out with your friends, you know, miss me because you're too close to me. You need a break, right? So make sure you have your own identity. Make sure you um, um, and have fun and do your fun things. Whether I have my music life, so I can do my music life. You might like building cars and stuff. You go and build cars you know, or play cards, gamble, whatever it is. Go out, whatever it is, and do your own thing. Make sure you have your own identity. So, um... And intimacy, I think it's important, <laughs> not obviously not in a professional way, but in with your partner. Make sure that you are uh, just trying to understand each other, you know, mm -hmm. check in with each other. And that can involve, you know, uh, other physical stuff, but, you know, mostly just, just being able to understand each other, you know, and talk about each other openly and safely and feel secure it's always good um and then another TED talk talked about insight and i think that was a huge one because that's for me is huge be aware and understand and learn about yourself have an idea of who you are and what you need and what you want 
why you do the things that you do. <laughs> Anticipate the positive and negative um, consequences of your behaviors. Learn from your, your mistakes. I think it's a really good idea to just get yourself. Like, do you like, to, are you needy? Do you like things? So you like a lot of attention? Do you know your love language? Do you know what you're looking for in a partner? Do you know what you're attracted to? Do you know what are your deal breakers? You know, like, um, what works for you? What doesn't work for you? That's huge. That's having insight. You got to understand yourself, which is huge. And you got to see, you know, what it is that you makes you who you are, right? So insight, have insight before you start, you know, establishing, you know, any relationship, right? Mutuality was another one. They said, know that both people have needs and they are both important, concerning each other's wants and needs. I think this is kind of like, once you know your needs, better start learning your brother, your, your brothers, your significant others or someone else's needs. Know your needs is the first step, but now being able to, um, Consider each other's needs and compromise, I think. Um, and that's maybe learning, your, like first learning your love language, but also learning their love language, how they feel appreciated, how they feel heard, you know, and all that. So mutuality. And then last but not least, emotion regulation. Um, this is being able to regulate your feelings and response to things that happen in a relationship. You know, keep your emotions in check and in perspective. Um, tolerate, you know, tolerate uncomfortable feelings and not, uh, not, um, not act on them impulsively. Think through decisions more clearly. Maintain a sense of self-respect and commitment to your needs, even when bad things happen in the relationship. I think it's huge. You know, you have to understand, set your emotions aside. Sometimes, you know, you might act overreact, but know how you are and how to kind of manage them. Because this is where kind of with your emotional intelligence comes into play. You know, um, don't let things affect you. If you know you are, what do you need to do? Do How do you need a timeout? Uh, do you need to exercise more to help you, you know, help you with your stress? What do you need? And uh, this is so being able to regulate your emotions is going to be important. Are you a jealous person? Oh, figure out what's really the problem. Some insecurities, you know, past experiences. Just... Learn how to emotion, regulate your emotions. That's pretty much what's it. And last but not least, you guys, so we have insight, mutuality, emotion regulation. We've talked about like communication, forgiveness, understanding, understanding the five love languages, respect, appreciation, honesty, making time for each other, um, Laughing a lot, having your own autonomy, identity, and intimacy. But I think one of the big ones for me is that is to never and to always grow continuously. Because as you grow, as you learn new skills, as you try new things, you keep things and that's in work or in a personal life. If you don't, you're not growing, if you're not learning new things, if you're not training yourself or, you know, um, learning something new, new skill, then you're kind of like dying. So I really feel like if you're worried about your relationship not lasting, not being healthy, it's just keeping yourself moving. To stay healthy, they say, keep moving. So that means keep growing, keep learning new things, new skills. I feel like you should be learning new words every day. You should be be actively moving for your physical health. Keep you know uh, watching YouTube channels and and you know enriching your mind with new things because that's how you will keep your relationships going and healthy and upbeat. So I encourage everyone to try to learn something new, never stop growing, and understand all these qualities that you're looking to have a healthy relationship, whether it's with, you know, significant other, whether it's in a professional level. Um, I think these are a good start. There might be more, but these are the ones that I've caught no personally, and I hopefully you guys can have healthy relationships. So until next week. 
Let me know if you have any suggestions. Have a good day.